Hi there, Victor Pra speaking to you, anarchist artist. Ah, oh boy. The beauty of nature in black and white, those amazing summer green leaves. Anyway, thanks for viewing in. Um, today I'd like to talk about an old acquaintance of mine, Mr. Stefan Molyneux, anarchist philosopher, as I am an anarchist artist. Anyway, um, there's a few reasons why I'm in, inspired to do a uh, video blog as the Vogue, uh, current uh, technologically advanced society that we live in, the Vogue language of uh, internet talk and surfing and whatnot. I wanted to create a video blog for a few reasons is because um, there I have been involved in some foreign uh, or uh, Facebook uh, debates on certain forums. Uh, one of them being um, Angora's Revival, and uh, the issue of anarchism is a hot uh, debated topic there. And uh, Stefan Molyneux being, uh, I guess, a subculture heavyweight and anarchist uh, philosopher who's uh, proving to be a considerable uh, force to be reckoned with, that he can inspire such indignation <laughs> and uh, the trollic... Uh, feedback from the people on these forums, I guess it uh, rather, I guess, speaks in the man's favor in a certain way. Um, uh, as a caricaturist, I, there, there are certain people that I will caricature who have been extremely uh, destructive people, people that I despise, but because of their impact in the world and on people to whatever degree, it could be great or small, but significant enough that warrants me to do a caricature of them. Now, I do caricatures, of course. I do paintings of people that I admire greatly, but I also do uh, paintings of caricatures of people that I deplore. But the, per the people who have no impact, who have zero influence, who are just a, not even a speck on the uh, historical radar, whether in the subculture or otherwise, I don't bother to caricature, even though they might have written a book or made a movie or whatever. Whatever. Uh, some people are just inconsequential. And I think for anybody who uh, receives great praise and love and admiration, obviously is making an impact, and also by the same token that a person is receiving such hostility, uh, the same reason applies. The same thing applies, is that they're making an impact and uh, they're to be reckoned with. Their ideas are uh, titillating and uh, provocative and annoying and outrageous. And uh, they have an audience, and these people know that. So Stefan Molyneux is a, is a force to be reckoned with. Now, in regards to the hostility that I've uh, been reading, I've, uh, I've asked myself um, you know, a few questions in regards to that. Uh, this whole discussion d began as a very vile debate on anarchism uh, as a uh, philosophical idea or as a uh, or as a as a proposed alternative system to the current paradigm to which we're all encased uh, is the advocacy of a free society. This is going to be when it comes to politics, when it comes to religion. This is. Um, a heated uh, discussion. Okay, this is dealing with fundamental questions. This is dealing with the deepest roots of philosophical inquiry, and that regards the cosmos, the meaning of life, our role here, uh, the uh, the good society, morality, uh, the role of government, the destruction of government, the ideas of freedom. That could be something that's extremely intimidating. That for other people it could be extremely extremely attractive and liberating. Uh, the the family. These are heavy duty topics. These have great uh, concerns with people, and they're, you're dealing with a hotbed of very fundamental issues in the universe, and that's why there is such uh, uh, heated uh, emotion over these things. That's there's nothing surprising about that. Okay, uh, so you could be on the you could be on one side. Or you could be on the other side. You could be pro, you could be against, whatever the issue is. Pro against, you're for it, and, uh, you're, or, you're all, or you're all against it. And there's great passion and intellect that uh, comes to these matters. So 
you know, it seems to me that um, that uh, Stefan, so far as where the criticisms have been concerned, uh, he's got uh, ensnared in uh, uh, into the quagmire of a position that people are already ready to dispose of because they do not care for anarchism. So there's this little psychological projection that takes place where you feel that you, if you dispose of the person at Hottamum, as it's called, you feel quite, you feel in a position to congratulate yourself that you have disposed the ideas, the arguments. So you, you attack the person and you feel that by the same brushstroke that uh, you've managed to dismiss the arguments and they no longer hold any sway, have any foundation, zero validity because person X did A, B, and C. Um, now, I'm sure you can hear the plane up above. Now, the uh, some of the issues of what uh, Stefan has been, uh, you know, challenged with is his banning of people on his site, and uh, apparently for no reasons uh, other than that he was annoyed or something like that. And there's these issues of uh, of uh, Stefan having shady business uh, deals when he was an entrepreneur, and he got caught up into a. Uh, uh, a morally compromised position. All of this is something that's been admitted and elaborated upon. That he uh, uh, that he that he has dealt openly with these issues. And you just got to ask yourself, with the people who are leveling these type of criticisms, if they're truly coming from an objective, impartial uh, assessment of these uh, of these ideas and of the person. Okay. Now, to give you an example. Um, one might wonder where I stand when it comes to the guy. And I can tell you right now that, as from what I know, Stefan was only an acquaintance of, my, uh, acquaintance of mine. What I know from, about the guy, uh, ostensibly, and uh, what he's uh, confessed and, and how he behaves and how, how I've seen him, the, the limited interaction that I've had with him, and considerable exposure to his ideas and, uh, and uh, who he is today as a person. Um, I can ju I can say you know quite simply that I find him uh, to be a, a, a great person, a very admirable person, um, and uh, because of the fight that he's le making for for freedom, something that's a very strong and important issue to me. Now I, I can best describe my my take uh, to Stefan in, in this way that um, I was not born an anarchist. I fought tooth and nail with these ideas before I finally caved to them, if you want to put it that way. And the reason why I caved to them is because I did a great deal of thinking, of hard, honest, introspective, searching, hunting, making logical connections, checking historical facts, relying on my sum of knowledge that I have in philosophy since it's been a lifelong passion and interest of mine. And uh, I was, for a time, a small government advocate and uh, just being interested in ideas I decided to check out all types of ideas just as I've investigated and studied Marxism, um, uh, Christianity, any type of ideas that I would oppose. So I opposed um, anarchism and I just thought that it was a crackpot uh, loony position to take. But then I stopped myself and I said, whoa, 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 I mean, let's really take a look at these ideas just with the same type of rigor that I gave to studying Marxism and socialism and collectivism and, uh, and all the isms that I oppose, but at least I know what I'm objecting as opposed to offering up a knee-jerk reaction by some cultural uh, bromides that, uh, that's memorized by rote or uh, by um, uh, osmosis that the culture happens to spill into your head and that's what you go with. I mean, people who offer up objections such as, you know, well, what about the roads or uh, your utopian uh, society and if you, if you don't like it, if, uh, love it or leave it, pal, if you don't vote, you haven't got a right to complain. This is not thinking. This is, uh, <laughs> this is repeating bromides that you picked up, just like when you step into dog shit, some of it sticks to your, to your shoe. I mean, that's where a lot of people get their ideas from, is from the cult culture at large, whatever's pumped into them whatever they can't help but, but absorb, being conceptual beings, nothing that they've con seriously uh, considered and filtered and did hard thinking, hard thinking. This is about hard motherfucking thinking. This is mental sweat. So I did not just automatically uh, become biased and jumped on to anarchism. I asked the hard questions. 
Okay, I cha I was not immediately satisfied. It's something that I uh, did a, a, a hard investigation in, right or wrong. At least I went in with open intellectual uh, curiosity, and that's the type of thing that I can say that St uh, Stefan definitely has the attribute of. Okay, he's not. Uh, this is not um, uh, a popularity contest. It's quite the opposite. He, the guy's giving up. Uh, a, a lucrative career where he's pulling in whatever uh, 150 G's to become an internet philosopher because these ideas are important to him and he relies on donations and that's fine I mean that's another criticism that's been leveled at him and I just think it's it's pathetic it's absolutely ridiculous and I have nothing to gain from uh, Stefan Molyneux other than appreciating the ideas and listening to him and appreciate him as an intellectual uh, he's not giving me money to say these things, uh, and in fact, of anything, you know, I've asked a favor from him. I wanted him to appear in my uh, documentary, a documentary that's now being edited, uh, called um, Icons and Idols, Pop Goals of Culture. He refused, you know. Well, I, I was kind of disappointed, but hey, that's, that's his choice. And uh, I can tell you right now that he's not a fan of my art. So what? So what? It doesn't matter. What matters is the ideas. Are they true? Are, are they false? That's all you have to go on. Not what the person did, not whether he was involved in some uh, sh uh, shady deals as a younger man. He made some mistakes. He did, he did the uh, self-investigation. He looked in. Uh, he lost sleep. He became, suffered from insomnia for a while. Uh, all this bodes well to the man. But if you just want to focus on certain things and just extrapolate those, and whatever negative cherry-picking that you can do to just dismiss the man because you have a problem with anarchism, it's not intellectual honesty. I I'm sorry there's no way, nice way to say it. it. You're just biased. You are biased, and you're not intellectually honest. So with all things considered, Stefan and I come from a very similar philosophical background, that being objectivism. And one of the things that is, that's hammered to me, that has stuck with me, is uh, not to give to I, uh, succumb to ideas just because they're popular, not to succumb to ideas because they're emotional, uh, emotionally uh, uh, caressing and they feed into already pre-existing prejudices. This is what constitutes modern thought, by and large, and that's not where I'm coming from. And I, and I know that that's not where Stefan's coming from because I know that much about him. We do have that uh, philosophical parallel. Uh, similarities in our, in our backgrounds when it comes to philosophy. Okay, we both went on the RAND track uh, and retained what we thought to be positive and, uh, and uh, accurate in regards to that. We filtered it, rejected other parts of the philosophy. So that's all I can say. Uh, I hope this video has some uh, importance and uh, relevance to whoever happens to be listening to it, who appreciates his ideas, and who, don't, who doesn't appreciate where he's coming from. Victor Pross, Anarchist Artist, Pop Goes the Culture.